Hello and welcome to this very special video brought to you by me Rebecca Gillard and joined as always by Richard Walker. Good day. Good day. Um, so in this video then we're going to be <coughs> spoiling some cards. Oh. Yeah. Is it start cards or night watch cards? Do you want to take a guess? Well no because I'm playing in the video so I, I obviously know. <laughs> Maybe we'll let them figure it out as we go along. Sure. So um, we've got me on the left playing Night's Watch Brotherhood and Richard on the white, on the white, on the white, on the white, on the White Walker channel, on the right even playing Stark Fealty. Um, so we've designed these decks um, especially for the game. Um, we were talking with some people on Discord and there was a few um, people that very kindly offered up their decks to us. And then Richard decided that he wanted to make a mean Stark sacrifice well, deck. No, it wasn't quite like that. It was because. Um, my Greyjoy cards are unavailable due to me having lent them out. Oh. <laughs> so I couldn't play the Greyjoy rows that Colin had kindly offered me. I'm sorry, Colin. I'd have played the Greyjoy rows. You were so excited as well. I was. <laughs> um. So, um. yeah, so we've drawn cards. I decided to keep mine. Richard uh, Mulliganed. Um, and if I remember correctly, you weren't particularly happy with what you got. No, it was crap. Yeah. I got basically the characters I, the only characters I didn't really want. <laughs> so considering your deck, uh, is based on being extremely mean and making people kill off their own characters and... You know, all that kind of horrible stuff. You managed to find the characters that are, like, the worst things for you to set up with. Both of them really bad set up. I mean, who wants to set up Aya? Nobody. <laughs> and Ramsey Snow? No, you don't want to set that up either. Definitely not. But at least you've got economy on the bottom there. Um, my side, I was really happy with my setup, actually. I managed to find a, um, a Crocolis, Egret. I managed to find the one flea bottom that I have in my deck. So I was like, oh, that's quite cool. I'll see how that works. Um, and an Ocean Road. So I was quite happy with my setup. Yeah, seems okay. Mm. You noticed a lack of Night's Watch cards here. <laughs> I know it's also a lack of power icon. That's true. That's nice. It's fine. I got this shit. I'm not expecting you to run a lot of Night's Watch characters when you're playing Night's Watch Brotherhood. Yeah. I I was quite excited about playing a Brotherhood deck. Oh, I should probably say that I found this deck. Um, well, most of this deck. I changed a couple of little bits and bobs online. Um, and we, we based it on the, what was it, Scan, oh, what's his name? You know it. Stephen Cantrell. Stephen Cantrell's deck. Um, so he had a Night's Watch Brotherhood deck on there. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I based it on, on that one. Cool. Which is... Give credit where credit um, due. Yes, of course. So, plot-wise then, got time plenty from me. And nothing burns like the cold. Yeah. Yeah. So that one flea bottom... In my deck that I found. I didn't know one flea bottom. <laughs> I thought maybe you had a disgusting idea of using Wildling Scout every single round. I mean, that would be lovely. Um, and I think that's why the flea bottom's in there. But it's not like, you know, what my whole deck is based around. Well, let's just get rid of it, yeah? Yes, I can see. It's, it's, it's gone. It's there in the discard pile. Untouchable for the moment, at least. So people might be thinking... Oh, we've got some Stark spoilers. Oh, oh, we've got some neutral Wildling spoilers. Mm. They could be. Or they could be thinking, oh, we've got some weird random Night's Watch spoilers that she's forced into a deck. Well, that'd be stupid, wouldn't it? Yeah. I've got a Northern Keep, which is not great. Um, I don't Oh, yeah. It's irrelevant this round. It might help me in future rounds. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't think... I had many summer plots in the deck. Do you note that I got roped into playing this game in the minimal time? I'm still in my work clothes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, to be fair, you were supposed to have gotten home and then we would have had like three hours or something to do it. However, you randomly told me as I was setting up the camera, which you'd already agreed to do, that you'd actually got a meeting that you'd forgotten about. Yeah. So it's not really my fault. Wow. Well, wow. Well. We could have postponed <laughs> What's that? Last half. You, that's what you were asking at the time, it seems. <laughs> What's that? So, if I remember, is this the one where when one of your characters is sacrificed? Nope. No, is this the strength boost you one? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, this one, then, is the one where they boost by two? 
Boost the Stark character by two? Yep. Or three. Or three if there's a win. No, no three if plots. there's more than three pl- If there are three plots or less in your used pile. Ah, okay. Used plot pile. I really don't know that card very well. I don't even think there is a location that where you sacrifice anything. So, you thinking of Winterfell Crypt? Yeah! Oh, that's what I'm thinking of. Definitely no. Oh. Oh, well. And you got Cat, which is really annoying because I wanted to do fun brotherhoody stuff. It's fine. You still we can, can deal with her. The Brotherhood agenda is literally not stopped by Cat at all. I know. Uh, it was more like my, my silly neutrals, uh, mildlings stuff that I wanted to do. You always do this kind of thing. It's weird. What kind of thing? I don't know. Neutral decks. It's weird. It's not. It's weird. Neutral like, decks are the best. <clears throat> I don't understand your obsession with playing neutral jank decks. I literally, I like literally don't understand cards. it. I'm getting the look. <laughs> You're odd. What's coming out here then? It's, it's John Snow! Oh, great. With the noble lineage. With the noble lineage! Great. He's a tricon with lots of wildlings. Yeah, I kind of remember why I didn't want to commentate the video anymore. Is it because my deck's so awesome and you were jealous? It almost, almost definitely not that. Almost definitely, but not definitely. So yeah. probably not. There's a chink of hope. <laughs> and you can see in my hand, I've got a weird bow, which I'm very excited about playing out. Because then all your characters can be like zero strength. I like weird bow. They're quite cool. So weird bow is when you can kneel it um, to reduce a defending character's strength by two. Yep. But the good thing is, is your character doesn't have to be participating. I, I like how I'm waggling my finger at the microphone here. You are. Your character doesn't have to be participating in the challenge, so it could be that you're attacking with another character. The only thing is it has to go on a, I think it's a wildling or a night's watch. Does it work on night's watch? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Well, it better do if you're going to put it on John Snow. <laughs> I'm well. really debating what to do here, aren't I? Yeah, I mean, you always take this long. Like, what's wrong with you? I'm sorry, I like thinking about stuff. I overthink. I like thinking about stuff. <laughs> what? Did you really say that? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I do have a tendency to overthink a lot and overthink. You have a flair also for options. the melodramatic. I do a little bit. You're American sorry. like that. I'm not American. <laughs> I'll get there eventually, guys. I'm sorry that I'm so slow here. This is boring. What are you doing? It's fine. Like I'm making a... a oh, oh, that's a really nice decision. <laughs> I thought I was going to do something cool. Yeah, that's not really cool. Okay. So at this point, I would like to point out that I never actually played Brotherhood before, so I apologise if I occasionally do something wrong. You look like you're sucking on your finger. I know I'm thinking. That's my thinking pose. <laughs> you are know like you're gnawing on it. <laughs> Oh, no, we just had lunch, so I wasn't even hungry, so I wasn't gnawing on it. Um, I also wanted to point out that on the Brotherhood agenda there, you can see that I've got four icons. Um, so I was using those to just remind myself of whether I've been using um, Intimidate, um, Renown, Insight, or Stealth. Um, so I'm picking up the green one, so that's the one that I was using for Insight. So one might say oh, a good God. player doesn't need reminders. So there's a little explanation mark here. Because I was like, oh, I'm going to give John insight. You tried to cheat. Because I forgot that Brotherhood is a neutral character. But I yeah. did change it, so it's fine. But I was a bit, like, you know, thrown off when I realised I'd done it wrong. But I do very soon realise. So it's, it's, it's fine. It's fine, right? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. guess I guess it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Even Richard said so. Whatever. There you go. See? See? I was a lot long. I realised. Did you even say words just then? It just <laughs> sounded like some sort of squealy noises. <laughs> I don't know. So, Egret has insight. Egret has insight. Indeedy. Wonderful. Hmm. The annoying thing about this is Wildling can restand with Jon Snow on attack. <laughs> so you can get that insight twice. Yep. That seems efficient. That was the point. The thing that I've found a lot with neutrals is that card draw is a problem. So I was actually quite happy playing this deck and I was like, oh. Brotherhood lets me give insight to somebody. That's card draw. That's pretty cool. So I was quite happy that I, you know, found this um, deck from... Was it Stephen? Steve. Stephen Cantwell, yeah. From Stephen online. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I quite like this one. Mm. So you were first player, but you decided to not attack. So I got a little bit confused here. I meant to put John in. <laughs> Which I'm going to do in a 
moment. So, uh, pop in, um, there we go, he's into the challenge. I like you, you almost look startled. Like, oh. I know, I was like, oh, I don't want to mess up on camera, that'd be really embarrassing. So, yeah, and now we've talked about it. Well, yes, I, you know, I just wanted to inform the And you've viewers. already tried to cheat by giving Jon Snow insight. No, I didn't, it's fine. So, um, intrigue, stealth and cat to make sure I can do all my fun stuff. And that really stuns everyone with John's reaction because it was unopposed. So I get my uh, my little hound tucky fried chicken token. You stole my roost. <laughs> yeah, you don't need roost. It's fine. Roost might have been handy. Clear all those low strength characters off your board. Hmm. You'd have got pretty much all of them in one go, wouldn't you? So that's the um, intrigue through. And um, we're going to do military now, stealthing Ramsey, because that's the only military icon. I uh, guess an unopposed. That's true, actually. Roost, with last half, would have been seven strength. He would have killed Egret, Crow Killers, and the <laughs> <Wildling> Bandit. <laughs> I never said <laughs> that the way I adjusted the deck was in a good way. <laughs> mm. So I've let Arya die. You mm. have. But that's fine, because you've probably got Summer, right? Maybe. And finally got a power coming through from John. A stealth and cat. Um, and that will go through unopposed. As a reward for my dominance, <laughs> I gain a power. Woo! Ah, looks like I'm at reserve. I'll get rid of the North Remembers. Watch me promptly forget in the next round to bring it back to my hand when one of my characters is killed. What? Are you saying that I'm going to kill some of your characters? Yes. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Anywho. Well, we haven't had any spoilers yet. No, we haven't. I need to find them first. We're 12 minutes in and people are think we've been roped in to watch a spoiler video. There are no spoilers. It's a good trick, wasn't it? <laughs> Freak. Not supposed to trick our loyal viewers. It's fine, it's fine. They're coming. In fact, I think they get played this round. Do they? Or one of them do anyway. Okay, so we've got Winter Festival from me and Val of the Highness, which is really annoying. <laughs> I finally got like a nicely set up wilding board. I was like, oh, this is all right. Better Val of the Highness than Val of Morghulis. Mm, I think I'd have been very, very sad if that was the case. So losing Egret there and the um, wildling bandit. Bandit? Yeah. Yeah. Which is um, good. I mean, you don't have the crow killers turned on. No. Both, both plots have a reserve of six. Yeah, I swapped a couple of the plots, I think. Um, which may or may not have been a good idea. The crow <laughs> killers don't kneel that. Um, don't stand that much. But it's fine. They're just there for wildling stuff, right? Yeah. So, who's first player? Have I made you the first player? Um, Probably. Yeah, I mean, the possibility that you have Intimidate makes it kind of, I don't know, annoying. Say again, sorry, if I have Intimidate, it's annoying. Yeah. Yeah, the fact that you, you know, I, when, if I make you first, you can have Intimidate and you can kneel my board. Or if I make you second, you can just get Stealth or Insight and... Mm. It's quite handy, actually. I, 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 playing this game, I really enjoyed the Brotherhood agenda. I know I've already said that, but I want to reiterate it. But it, it's jank, right? Probably, you but see, it, it was nice many, in this deck. You don't see a lot of it having competitive play. No. No, I think it involves using too many neutral cards. And although we're getting better and better neutral cards, there's still not enough, I think. So we're slowly getting there. Okay. Loads of neutral cards. This is slow. Yeah, it's because I'm playing out a new card. Would you look at that? You want to tell us what it is? Why don't you tell us what it is? You're playing it. Yeah, that's a fair point. Fine, I will. So, we have the Obsidian Arrows. Night's Watch. Loyal. Zero cost attachment. It's a weapon. Bestow four. As an action... While attached character is attacking, move one gold from obsidian arrow. I can't say it. Obsidian arrows to a defending character, 
to give that character minus three strength until the end of the challenge. In brackets, limit once per challenge. What do you think of this card, Richard? Meh. Boy. Meh. Don't like it much. No? Was it annoying against you in the game? Probably. <laughs> I mean, it is annoying, but... I don't know. I mean, let's look at the positives, shall we? Okay. So, I mean... You can't put it in Targ Burn. Yes. Because it's loyal. Which I think is quite important, because otherwise that could be absolutely insane. Yeah. But mind you, Wildling Bowden's in Targ Burn decks, so... That's also true. But that's probably because of the requirement to have a nice watch character or a neutral character. Which would be difficult in your Tark Burn deck. Um, other things that we looked at was that with the minus three, minus three strength, it does help to push through the unopposed um, if you're an attacking Night's Watch deck. Um, and it also helps you to um, get off your win by five effects. So yeah, generally... Man. I mean, you have the ability to reduce my defending strength by five. Yeah, because I've got the Weird Bow out as well. So it, it does mean that, you know, if you're in a in a highly aggressive, you know, this Night's Watch Wildling kind of deck... You could You've have got more opportunity to do two it. claim plots and put to the sword. I could. Yeah. I could. Maybe I do. Maybe you do. Maybe I do. You don't, but maybe you do. <laughs> I could have done. Um, so it's also quite handy with your crossing decks. Um, it means that if you're using that character on your first challenge, for example, you know, you're know you more likely to get your first challenge through, even with your reduced strength, because you can reduce your opponent's character by three. Yeah, so it's not like Wildling Bow in the fact that... It- it can be done from any color character in mm. any challenge. Like you have to have that character participating, which is a negative. Yeah. Um, yeah. We also thought, like, like I say, it's, it's hardest to use. But also, if you look at something like Jacaris, um, Jacaris is one cost, and you're minusing your opponent's character strength by four and killing them if they get to zero. So this is an attachment. Um, you're paying one for minus three instead of minus four and it's not like you're killing them or anything if they get to zero the other problem with this one is it's an attachment and if you're bestowing an attachment it is so easy to lose them through like confiscation or if your opponent's playing targ like with Viserys and um, you know him going out of play is going to get rid of your attachment you said it would bestow four right yes like can you imagine anyone bestowing four on that it would be and mad and getting it confiscated <laughs> next round that would be sad it would be very sad I mean you could I guess it lends itself to an attacking Night's Watch because mm. it only hits them when you're attacking them. So it doesn't really go in a, in a defense deck where you might have Practice Blade and Craven, which might use up the opponent confiscation. Yeah. So they're more likely, I guess, to confiscate it. I guess the only other thing, though, is they are um, non-unique. So you could have all three out if you really, really wanted to. Um, That's a big gold investment. It is indeed. Bit of yeah. a tempo hit. Definitely. But at least they cost zero, right? Um, you know what I don't like about it? Go on. I mean, compare it to Wild Wildling Bow. Weirwood mm-hmm. Bow, sorry. Weirwood Bow cost one, and you can give a minus two strength to defending characters every round for that one gold investment. Obsidian Arrow, you can use one gold of it once for a minus three once. Yeah, and then, then you the use attachment the is basically how to fodder. Yeah, I mean that's a, that's a good thing though, right? I mean it's an attachment, so it does mean that Howder can use it to boost strength as well. Um, and also because it's a weapon, it does mean that it can go on a lot of the Night's Watch characters because normally they say no attachments except weapons. So yeah. at least like you know it, it's worded in a way that they can go on Night's Watch characters. <laughs> so another interesting thing about it is the text on it. The text on it says, um, move one gold from Obsidian Arrow to a defending character. So you actually move your gold from the attachment onto the defending character. So the thing I'm not sure about here is, does your gold stay on the character then? Yes. What if that character is a bestowed character? Well, they can use it. Does that work? Yeah. Could you trigger the action on your bestowed character? You know, like Begging Brother, for example. Hmm. So well, in that it'd case, it'd be a really stupid move. But. Yeah, well, I'm just thinking in um, in melee, could that not be a bargaining tool? Like you could be like, okay, well, I'm going to reduce your character strength, but I'm going to give you a um, extra gold, which you could use for your bestow. Could do. Some people might like that. Yeah, and you just thought of that. 
That's if it I actually don't like works. That because Melee, <laughs> Melee is just horrible. <laughs> you just hate Melee in general, don't you? It's all right. I've come around to it. Yeah, you're getting, getting more used to it. It's okay. I mean, we've had some fun games. We have. There's also um, a couple of other things we wanted to say about the uh, Obsidian Arrows. So, is there? Yeah, so um, we also wanted to point out that if your character lo- um, lose play for whatever reason, so if he gets put to the sword or yeah. taken the claim or boltoned, naughty yeah. ruse, you know, you're, you're just going to lose that attachment and the bestow on it as well. So and You get the attachment back to hand. Yeah, you get the attachment back to hand. But you, you lose, lose your gold bestow. investment. Yeah, so it is quite a, a fragile thing to be using. Yeah, can be. But, you know, what would you say? Would you say it's an overall good card or an overall bad card? No, I don't like it. Don't like it? Not really. Yeah, I think I'd... I'd go like a meh. <laughs> it's a meh card. It's... In comparison to other cards that do similar things, it's bad. Um, yeah, I mean, people will find a use for it. It'll yeah. go in some decks. I don't think it'll see a lot of competitive play. No. Um. So, let's look back on the boards then. Um. So, the last round, I know we talked over it. Apologies, guys, but we thought that you might like to know about the new cards. Um, so we've got the uh, Winter Festival being played here in this third round, um, and that's against Frozen Expanse, is that right? Yeah. So this is an interesting plot choice, Richard. Yeah. Any insight into it? What, why I played it? Yeah. Well, because I don't have characters that are two strengths, or lower. Why is it in your deck? Because I don't have many characters of two strengths or lower. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if I do, I have the ability to stand them with Rob Stark. Ah, oh, so Rob's in the deck then somewhere. Well, yeah, I've run him three. He triggers off Ramsey. He triggers off Roos. He triggers off Bran. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Actually, yeah, Rob's really he triggers off the stuff, North Remembers, which I forgot to bring back to hand. You plonker. Yeah. But it's fine if you hadn't mentioned it. No one would realise because we were talking about the new cards. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. I like Frozen Ban. You don't see a lot of play. Um, yeah, I like it. Yeah? Fair enough. I mean, some people might think, ah, oh, it, it keeps your character now, it should be used in a Neil deck. Mm. But the reverse is also true in that if you have lots of stands, you can use it in a stand deck. Yeah. You can get around the downside. Yeah, that's a fair enough point. Oh, look, what's this? Could this be our second spoiler card? It is. And the art on it is very nice. I really, really like the art on this. And we'll, of course, put the spoiler images up on the internet thing. <laughs> the um... <laughs> On the White Walkers yeah, Facebook? Yeah, on, on that, yeah. Yeah. So we'll pop the um, the images up on the White Walkers Facebook page. Um, probably, yeah, later Sunday evening, I'd imagine. Yeah. Um, so the Tell new us card about there. the card then, come on. So it is Garrison on the Wall. It is Night's Watch, non-loyal. Um, it is six cost character with a military and power icon and six strength. It's um, army trait, no attachments. As a reaction... Not even no attachments except weapon. Not even no attachments except weapon. Just no speak. attachments. Just no attachments. So as a reaction, after Garrison on the Wall is declared as a defender, kneel a non-Night's Watch character to stand Garrison on the Wall. Now you can see that with my pro attacking obsidian arrows and then garrison on the wall they're a bit opposite to try and squeeze into one deck well i guess that's what happens when they give you two spoilers and they basically go in different decks yeah so this this has kind just of jam shoe- it in yeah it's been shoehorned into the deck so we've tried to get some synergy with the rest of the deck um i mean at the end of the day it does say that you need a non night's watch character to stand them you so, got loads of them. Got loads of them, so it vaguely works. <laughs> but defending, I don't think he's going to be high on your priorities in this deck. No. But the good thing is, is like, you know, <clears> here's <throat> another Night's Watch character to work with John, so he can stand um, on the defence with John, um, and then could stand again um, after a second challenge if we knelt a uh, Wildling character to do so. So, well, I mean, a six strength bicon, it's not too bad to have that working twice for you on defence. Especially if you're the second player, because then you can use it twice on defence and then attack. Exactly. Yeah, sounds perfect. Um, now, the thing with this one, um, the problem with this is I think my favourite thing about it is the art. It's lovely Which art. basically says a lot about the card. <laughs> 
So the card in itself is a bit bland. Um, it's, I think, in a very specific deck. You can't just use it in a normal Night's Watch defense deck because you need those... It's a higher cost. Yeah, it's a high cost. And at the end of the day, there are so many other better six costers that you'd probably prefer to put into your wall defense deck. Such as? Oh, don't make me do this. You know I don't play Night's Watch. You no, I don't know. They're, I mean, six costers... There is an old bear. He's a steely one. Um, that's it. Cost you've got Corin, you've got yeah. Baron Marsh, you have Othel Yarwick. Um, but why? You, I mean, why wouldn't you just pay one extra gold for Old Bear who just doesn't kneel to attack? Mm. And if you win all your challenges on defense, you can throw a nice watch card into play. But I think the thing that I do like about it is it does encourage um, banner decks, and it also encourages you to use um, neutrals. So, I mean, if you imagine, um, like, another faction taking on the wall, wall is not loyal, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, you can, you know, take the wall, you can take this garrison on the wall um, and build a defense deck from another faction, which would be quite nice, you know, to see a bit more of a, a variety in your defense decks. I, I wouldn't say that's quite nice. I would say that would be boring and hideous. No one wants to see wall decks in other faction. I mean, I remember seeing someone play Tyrell Banner of the Watch, and it was just bad. It, was ty- well, it wasn't bad as in shit. It was bad as in fucking horrible. Well, I guess... You had Tyrell money with the wall and all your Nightwatch yeah. stuff. No, it's, it was bad. I and think it was Joel afford- Pearson playing it as well, actually. That makes sense. A dog side. <laughs> You'd be able to afford to um, pay for Garrison the Wall a bit more easily then as well, wouldn't you, And if it was in a banner deck? So I guess that works. Hmm... Um, we also wanted to point out that um, <coughs> the other good thing about this is if you do face a Targ deck, a lot of the Night's Watch characters can be a little bit lower in strength and easily burnable. It is um, high in strength. Yeah. However, you know, with six strength, seven if you've got the wall out as well, it does mean that it should be pretty safe for defending um, the wall and stopping those opponents from going through. So, so you have then the choice of paying four for a five strength ranging party, mm. or you pay six for a six strength garrison that can maybe restand. Yeah, if conditions are correct. I mean, obviously, a ranging party sounds better. <laughs> I, I like to say, I think I think the garrison at the wall only really works in specifically made decks, um, probably more banner decks than anything, mm. um, or. I, I think you it can just make about a wildling wall defense deck. I think it just about works in this deck. I know that um, I was talking with Alex O'Feeworth about his deck um, that he made last year, actually, um, and it was a Night's Watch Jon Snow defense deck, but it had loads of wildlings in it as well. Shit, you took this seriously. I did. Like you know, like we're getting spoilers. I want to make sure I do a proper job of it. So um, yeah, and and his deck, I think it would probably work quite well with this. Um, I'm not sure the economy was quite enough um, with the garrison in, in his plot lineup, but we could have probably tweaked that. Um, so I'd be interested to sort of see how garrison maybe works and the Azul Diara works in Alex's deck as well. Um, so, Alex, if you're watching, could you post your deck list for us? <laughs> maybe people can have a little look-see for us and um, see if they can come up with anything interesting. Alec probably isn't going to need to watch the spoiler video because you obviously already told him what they were if you asked for his deck. No, I didn't tell him what they were. Oh, right. Okay. I just said we've got Night's Watch spoilers. I see. I was good. I didn't spoil these to anyone before this video. Cool. And like someone I know. Who was that then? You. Did I spoil them? You did. You showed someone in our meta. Naughty man. I'm sorry. So I'll let you off. Please forgive me. I'll forgive you because I'm like absolutely smashing in this game, so I'm feeling quite generous. <laughs> yeah, I'm not impressed. I love that I'm smashing you with this stupid Night's Watch Brotherhood shoehorned in garrison deck. <laughs> I'm glad you're feeling really good about it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> you could have smashed me more if you weren't so scared of frozen expanse. Oh yes, I was terrified of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's back again. <clears throat> So um, I've chosen Long Winter here. Um, I figure some two claim would be nice against your smaller board. 
Um, and you're going for Frozen Expanse again. I can't believe you're running two of that in your deck. That's there's insane. One, there's nothing wrong with Frozen Expanse. No one plays it. <laughs> it's a winter plot. It's, it is a winter plot, but I, I think I've I was more And I've got loads of stand in my deck. Also, can I just point out, like, bloody Voltron John over here? <laughs> that is disgusting. He's got four attachments. A noble lineage. He's had obsidian arrows. Yeah. And I think it's two weirwood bows. It's two weirwood bows. Oh, and he's the king in the north. <laughs> He's not the king of the north, he's the king beyond the wall. Oh, my mistake. Sorry, it's the king beyond the wall as well. Although that doesn't do anything because you're winning. Which you've just realised and said, sod it, I don't care. <laughs> it's cool. It was just funny more than anything, I think. And then going for a bandit. And... Oh, am I? I'm debating what I'm playing out here. No, I'm going for it. And a scout, saving the one. So yeah, so as a summary then, so our two new plots, um, two new Night's Watch cards are the Obsidian Arrows, um, which basically you bestow for up to four and use a gold to reduce a character's strength by um, three to the end of the challenge. And we also have Garrison on the wall. You little fucker. They were non-kneeling this turn as well. <laughs> little shit. <sighs> I forgot you did that. Um, and Garrison on the wall. Which, um, uh, six cost, six strength, military power, um, and if you kneel a non Night's Watch card while they're defending, they can be stunned. So those are our two Night's Watch cards. Um, obviously we're going to carry on with the commentary and finish off the game for you, so you can see them in action a little bit. Do you like my, uh, Crow Killers? <sighs> what, the Crow Killers that you've just warded off of me on the turn where they were actually not going to kneel for change because I played in low reserve plot? It yeah, seemed like a good them. time to do it. Bugger you are. <laughs> it's fair to say my deck hasn't come together the way I would like it. No. I, I have seen your deck when it's worked, and it has been horrific. So I think I just got really lucky this game. <laughs> nah, it's just a jank deck. It, it works really well sometimes, and sometimes it just doesn't. Yeah. Or you just get the pieces in the wrong order. Um, I guess that's the fun. You try and make it more consistent if you can. Yeah. And if not, you forget about it. <laughs> and pretend it never existed. I don't know, you, you have had some like cool combos with this deck, I think. Yeah. Like, from what I've seen. There's one coming up in this game, it's a pretty cool play. Yes, I think there it's is. The next round. <laughs> um just wanted to point out, so obviously the last two rounds we've been talking about the spoilers, so I couldn't really tell you what I was doing, but the little black icon there that the Wilding Bandits got is the intimidate icon. So I was able to intimidate a few people in the last couple of rounds. Um uh, the first time I used it, I was like, <coughs> wow, this is amazing, I'm gonna make sure I keep using Intimidate. So you're defending the military power, military challenge there with the Crow Killers, which I thought, great, an opportunity to actually use these arrows. So I use the arrows to um, make it unopposed. You're such a bad human. Thanks. So I took the gold off because I wasn't entirely sure if I was meant to leave it on or not, but I think... Well, no, because they were dying, wasn't it? Oh, was it? Oh, I just took it off because I was just like, you know, didn't really Yeah, realize. you would leave it on them, but then they, they were dying. Yeah. Um, and then as a reaction to winning the challenge, John and the Wild and Bandits both stand up and intimidating Roose Bolton. I really like that I've managed to keep him there like pretty much the entire time. I was quite happy with that. Yeah, but look, I get the North Remembers back. You remembered! You remembered <laughs> the North Remembers! The North Remembers, but Richard forgets. <laughs> Can we have this as like our new slogan? No. <laughs> the North Remembers, but Richard forgets. I always That's forget brilliant. to recur it, so I'm just really impressed with myself. I have plenty of spare gold. You did. You did also repeatedly mention the fact that you kept forgetting North Remembers. <laughs> you'd have thought the amount of times you'd said it, you'd have remembered. It's an oxymoron. one. Yeah. So... What are you going to do now? Um, an intrigue by the looks of it. I want to keep all your characters now. It's quite fun. So we've got an intrigue there. Stealthing Cat. Because that stops you from... Stopping my stuff, basically. Stopped you from stopping my stuff. Yeah, you know, my weirwood bows and my obsidian arrows. you still got gold on that thing. i got one left. Oh, Christ. I'm doing math. You are doing math. You're doing That's a bit why it's pointing. taking a while. You're eating your finger still. <laughs> yeah, it's on stealth and cat on that one. I'm not eating my finger. That's my thinking pose, I told you. So you're defending with Ramsey to make sure it's not unopposed. Um, I do still win the challenge. Am I going to reduce his strength? Are you going to bow him? 
Go on, bow him. I was going to bow him, but instead I'm going to coin him. I'm going to arrow him. I'm going to shoot him with my obsidian arrows. And then I think we're debating if you want to use your... Um, last half. Last half. I need to check my hand before I can make that decision. It's a very important decision. And yeah, you can maybe have it unopposed them. Thanks. I also... Um, oh. Winter is coming. Glad Another that's gone. last half of winter is coming. An intimidating cat. Do you like how my little hound fried chicken is now surrounded by chickens? No, can't see it very well. But I don't like it. I'm mm. sorry. Well, if you've got a bigger screen, guys, you'll be able to see that the hound in the middle is surrounded by chicken. Because I'm winning. You might be thinking that Rebecca is 13 0 up. The rest of this game is not worth watching. watching but watch it. The next round is fun. You just fun. want to show off your combo, the don't you? The next round is fun round, and it makes Rebecca a little bit sad. <laughs> so my Wild and Bandit, they're not standing because of the um, plot. Yep. Just as an FYI. Um... <laughs> I got first snow. I'm definitely not using first snow now. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, the withering cold. So skip the standing phase this round. Um, against my ranger's cash. So um, I'm a little bit low on cards, and I'd quite like some more. I mean, I do like these non-standing plots. However, Jon Snow is kind of really irritating for this. Yeah. I think it was a... Well, to be honest, I thought when you, when you said you, that you were going to play this Stark Sacrifice deck, I was like, oh, that's really going to screw my deck. I thought that it was a bad matchup for mine. Um, but I think because your start was a bit funky, um, it's actually worked out all right. Mm. And also, I didn't realize how much, you know, non-standing stuff you had. Um, but I've got Rob! Oh no! Rob's out! You must be happy now. Um, now it doesn't matter if I skip the standing day, standing phase. Well, you need something to sacrifice, right? If you recall, the North remembers, but Richard forgets. Oh yeah! Okay, I'm there. And now I've got something that I don't mind sacking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so summer to bring back um, Arya, which I'm assuming you're going to play. I don't actually remember. No, I don't because combo. Oh god, c -c -c combo. I'm concerned. I okay. can't believe you don't remember my amazing combo. It obviously wasn't that amazing then. I was tempted just to tell everyone now what my combo is. <laughs> Don't spoil the surprise, honey. They must be so excited to see it. I know we've got a few loyal watchers who will watch this to the end, no matter what. Oh, the one with the funny name that I can't say, but calls himself no one because he's always here. Hi, no one. I'm sure you're still watching. He is. Almost definitely. And may the best woman win. Ha. Almost definitely am now. I'm sorry, did you say something? Well, yeah, because he, he he listened to our trash talk on the other video. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. And, but this isn't a competitive game. We haven't brought up the top four, and you may not be so cocky then. Well, we'll see, honey. We'll see. I'm sure that'll be only a few videos away. Look, I've, I've given up. I'm on my phone waiting for you to, <laughs> waiting for you to get over your marshalling. I am there. Right, my problem here was I had two cards in hand. I had Craster and I had nights, um, Nightmares. And I really wanted to use Nightmares. Um, on what? Like Roos, maybe? Because you were you, first? Wouldn't you Nightmares Rob? Because you can defend Roos. I, I didn't want to have to worry about it. So I wanted to Nightmares Roos, but that meant that I was like one gold short from playing Craster out. So I was like, okay, I'm quite happy with my board. I've got claim. The good thing about this is even if you Nightmares Rob to stop the North Remembers, I could just play Fallen from Favour next round and sacrifice someone and then stand my entire board in the plot phase ready for the next round. That's true. That'd be quite a cheeky play. Sorry, oh, yeah. Sorry. And then I remember at this point, <coughs> I was so nervous about nightmares in Bruce <laughs> Bolton. I hadn't done my reaction to the challenges phase with yeah. my brotherhood. You missed your window. You I missed did. the reaction to the phase start. And then you were being a little shit saying that I wasn't allowed to do it, even well, though it's a demonstration video. I was saying, no, well. <laughs> yeah. This is naughty, I say. No, you said this is not okay. This actually. is not okay. But it was fine. You were just being annoying deliberately you forgot you made an error 
if this was in a high profile tournament if it was in a high profile tournament you would still let me do it you're not that mean yeah but your opponent might not I don't know they might do depends depends how mean they are right yeah yeah there you go Callum would let you take it back oh we like Callum because he let me take one back in nationals and then I beat him (laughs) He'll probably never let anyone take anything back again. If he didn't let me take that back, I don't think I'd beat him. <gasps> and there's only a great Kraken power, but I just need that one power. And I took it by the skin of my oh, teeth no. and I beat him. And then he was sad. I really hope that I win by one power because of the renown of my Wildling Bandit, which you let me have. <laughs> Shame. So you've got an intrigue here coming through from Kat. Um, and I'm thinking, you're not going to defend this because... Unless you use John, you're going to you going to lose. And if you use John, you can't trigger him to restand. And there's no standing phase, so it's going to be... I'm going to win. Definitely unopposed. And it's unopposed, yeah. And I'm thinking, I'd quite like you to have a power for me to actually fucking take at some point in this game. <laughs> so, you know, I was quite happy to let you have it as an unopposed. So what's coming now? What, what should I do? Oh, God. I've only got military and power. Are you going to do your combo now? No. <laughs> I'm just going to attack you. Okay. I've got more than two gold saved. You do. I've got. You have three. A lot of military presence. You don't have put to the sword. I might have put to the sword. <laughs> oh, I've yeah. got. I've got a gold <laughs> on Ramsey Snow. I remember to leave it on him at least. Oh, okay. I feel better now. I left the gold on him. Um, so you're doing like a big ass military challenge here for like for four, seven, twelve, fifteen strength. And I do remember being very, very concerned that you might actually have a put to the sword. And I was like, if you put to the sword, my Jon Snow, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> you, I don't think you can even win the challenge. Um, I don't know. Garrison six. Six. Snow, Snow is, is six. six. Bandits one. Yeah, so I won't be able to quite win it. And I can only get to 17 with last half. Mm. Unless you defend with everything, I can't put to the sword. But <coughs> I feel that put like defending with everything and having nothing standing would be extremely sad. So I risk it. Do you Oh, I'm going to actually use my garrison, I think. Oh, no. I'm actually going to use it. Oh, my God. Combo. Combo-tastic. You're going to nail the garrison to trigger its reaction and... Then you're going to use the wildling gout to stand it? Yeah. Combo. Combo-tastic. I'm impressed. I mean, that is just an, an excellent combo. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh. look, here you go. This is me realising what I can do. <laughs> Reaction. Now it's gout to stand the garrison, so you defend for six. Yeah. Not enough to stop put to the sword. No. Well, so... I'm not running put to the sword, so it won't be that. <laughs> you little fucker. So yeah, so I've um, defended with the garrison there. Um, use the garrison's action to kneel a non-Night's Watch character, aka the Wilding Scout. Why am I taking a power? Was it unopposed? No, it wasn't, Richard. You took a power because you are a dork and forgot that I had opposed Well, I wouldn't it. be the first one to make a mistake. But wait! Shh. The <laughs> North remembers! <laughs> the North remembers! It does! So we both choose someone to sacrifice? Yep. I can react... To the sacrifice with Rob Stark to stand my entire board. Yeah. I can also react with as hard as winter <laughs> to uh, to bring in anyone three cost or lower. So that's Arya. I can also react with Arya to get dupe. That seems nice. Now I've got a stealth. Well done, darling. Thank were you, you. Were you pleased with your yeah, combo? I was delighted. That's That's good. It's a shame we didn't get the pieces earlier, but uh, <laughs> it's better when you're doing it with Bruce Bolton and Ramsey. Yeah, which is something that you have. The very first time I played this, I played on the Iron Throne, and I played Valada Harris. They made me the first player. Um, then I played Ramsey hard as winter, Ramsey, and he was very angry about it, and he left. <laughs> well, it's a very mean thing to do, Richard. So the garrison's been stealth there um, and doing a power challenge. 
I'm not going to defend because I just want to come back and smash you in the face and win, basically. Yeah, but the combo. The combo? On the I did the combo on the non-standing phase turn. You, you did, you did. You yeah. seem very pleased with yourself for that. <laughs> yeah. And then, like I say, next round, play form in favour, chuck away Ramsey or whoever, stand my board. Look, Richard, this is the most power you've had all game. Thanks. <laughs> my challenges. Mum just smash you next time we get a, sm- a spoiler video. <laughs> I'm going to crush you. Oh. <laughs> I like teasing, it's fun. <laughs> so I'm doing a power stealth and cat. Um so we've got reaction, we stand. You took your unopposed. I didn't, I didn't. I went to take it and then stopped. You nearly missed so your reaction. Unopposed again. and claim, and then I'm doing a military stealth thing ruse, and my wildling scouts got run down. <laughs> That's just terrible. So you defend, so it's not and unopposed. It's a wilding bandit, alright. <laughs> what else? So I'm using a bow and the other bow to reduce this um, <laughs> Ramsey's strength. But you decide to boost with her last task. So it's not unopposed. But I'm like, what ifs? My wilding bandits got renown. That helped because if I'd have left it unopposed, you would have won it on the unopposed and your wilding bandit wouldn't have had renown. Well, no, he's got renown anyway because of the I know, but you wouldn't have got that far because the game's over at look, 15. Look, a bandit won on renown. You're so lucky. <laughs> well done. And I well done said- us for... But jamming these two into a deck. <laughs> so thank you everyone for watching. We hope that you enjoyed the spoilers. And as we say, we'll get the images up soon. Um, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash the White Walkers. Bye guys. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.